Hello, uh, YouTube. This is uh, this is Albatross here. Um, I'm delivering something different today. Um, instead of the usual gameplays, I thought, uh, based off w uh, what I've seen from the uh, comment section um, in a lot of vi videos, um, I've decided to do a bit of a tutorial video, more like a uh, not so much a tutorial, more a, a strategy and map breakdown. So today, I want to start off um, with my favorite map. It's Fairly easy to uh, teach um, all the uh, sequences, like the first, second, and third uplinks on Junlan Wasteland. It's fairly, fairly simple. So I thought I'd uh, go through uh, with this map first. So to start off, um, we need to set a loadout. Basically, um, when I'm starting off at this map, basically what I want to do is a. If you're really good at using the EE3, that's my weapon of choice. Um, use that. It's medium to it's a medium to long range map mostly, so you're probably best uh, finding success with that weapon. If you're not if you're not like comfortable using uh, the burst fire, then I recommend the rebel blaster as an alternative for this map, as that is equally uh, as good. Um, if your hand, I'd probably recommend the personal shield. Um, it gets you out of a lot of uh, situations and can basically uh, put a lot of battles in your favor. Um, jump pack, um, I pretty much recommend this ability for almost all maps, like indoors or outdoors. Uh, back to bomb, um, this is this is a new thing I've been trying, but um, for this demonstration I'll probably recommend using back to bomb and berserker. They're both um, they both work really well in conjunction with the personal shield and the jump pack. Basically, three, three abilities plus the trait berserker that like lets you live and gets you that little bit of extra like game time and life uh, when you're moving around the map, and you can use it to your advantage. So, and the last uh, customizable uh, thing I want to show you guys is basically uh, the armor that you put on. I know it sounds kind of trivial. And a lot of people don't really think about it, and they just like go with what's cool or whatever. But um, if you're looking to get those like really big kill streaks, get some sick plays, um, any kind, anything like that, um, you probably want to go. Uh, you probably want to be a white, uh, a white stormtrooper, such as the scout trooper. Um, I'm probably going to be going a uh, shock trooper on uh, all the desert maps. Um, I like the red. <laughs> it's a nice touch, and it's white blends into the map, and the reason why I'd say this is because um, A-Wings and pretty much any other uh, aerial vehicle will target you straight away if you're a Shadow Trooper. Um, from personal experience, when I'm in the, uh, in the X-Wing or the A-Wing, I'll pretty much target the Shadow Trooper almost every time, simply because it's so easy to see on the map when you're dive-bombing people. Whereas if you're a Scout Trooper or a Shock Trooper, it's not so not so easy to target and uh, it can obviously can obviously be the difference between uh, getting a big kill streak and being gunned down by a by a nut job in the air from an A-wing so for those reasons I'm going to be choosing the shock trooper um, so let's get to the actual map alright so at the start um, Pretty much if you're on the Imperial side, you want to push the right side straight away. Um, you need to get to that uplink first. Concentrate um, attack on uplink stations. One reason, uh, you basically don't want any rebels uh, getting over the hills. Uh, pretty much the rebels only way of getting anywhere important on this map and fighting back is by pushing uh, this side here, this part of the map. The reason being is um, the walkers Push the middle lane, and really, if you're a rebel, you don't really want to be doing that. As a rebel, you want to be getting up here, like really being a pain in the backside of the Imperials. Like that's that's basically the play style. That as a rebel, you should be doing the entire time. Like not just this map, but every map. But for uh, for this demonstration's sake, um, as an Imperial, our job is to push the right side straight away, lock down this uplink. Um, clear out this street before finally pushing into the three spawns. Now, um, um, my recommendation for clearing out um, the right side, you have a lot of geometry um, you can use in order to do that, like 
these hills here are perfect for peak shooting. Like um, the biggest, um, the biggest benefit of third person over first person is you can basically you can see people with the camera. You can you can look around and then get shots off whenever you want, and um, move on from there. Um, so now that you have, um, I don't know it's easier said than done, but um, if you've cleared out this, um, you cleared out this area. Basically, what you want to do is you want to um, you want to lock down the spawns by achieving uh, that control from not only this lane um, because a they spawn they spawn on the turret there and um, at the end of the street where the walker is right now. But they also spawn uh, in the middle street. Right here, where this ATAT -AT is moving, and the little pocket there in front of the sand crawler. So basically, what you want to do is lock down both uh, the uplink in the Tuscan Raider campsite and under the sand crawler. Is just control this area. This is a lovely area where you can use to um, uh, basically fight off any spawners that come through here. I know a lot of the rebels. This is um high traffic area. For rebel spawners. They often jetpack here, trying to frantically get to the uplink or push or push uh, anybody sitting here so you can just you can just use these walls use the cover and get shots off on anyone here it's a great it's a great position because once you've cleared out people uh, pushing that lane you can just transition over here and you've got eyes on everyone you've got eyes on the uplink it's a great spot and again in conjunction with the abilities the personal shield the jetpack uh, back to bomb. You can just you can use like whatever means necessary to keep yourself alive. You know, if you're getting shot, you can just basically bug out of there, wait for your team, some help, and, and there you go. If you really want to get really want to get up in their grill, um, I suggest waiting until it's safe. Then using these uh, these hills again, peek over this spawn, get the dog. It's a really good spot. Um, at the start, when this game first came out, I would I would have advised um, go, going on top of the sand crawler. It's a it's an advanced um, move to make. You really got to be um, really got to be smart with a jetpack in order to get up there. But um, really, you only get a few kills sitting up there, and when you get a few kills, gonna, there's going to be some revenge players out there. They're they're like seen in all kinds of um, uh, shooter games and pretty much only get like two or three kills up there so I suggest using using the hills as cover they're a lot better um, getting multiple kill streaks and it keeps their spawns locked down so you can have both uplinks covered you can get a load of kills and it, basically it's a it's good fun now moving on to the second uplink sort of uplinks you really want to continue continue the um, strategy employed from the start is pretty much just using these hills. Um, three main spawns are again uh, fairly simple to um, see. Um, spawn moving up here, or well, pretty much up here, they spawn here. This is where you, this is where you want to spawn trap them. All right. So basically, as long as you're not, as long as your team isn't here in this area, you get them to. Sp you get them to spawn there if you get lots of shots off and basically block the, their initial spawns all the way over here. So three spawns, they spawn over there on the hills in the base. Uh, usually those spawns will spawn in the base. Um, it's usually hard to stop people, the rebels from getting uh, the uplink in the base because they have a spawn there. It's really hard to get them out. You don't really have TIE Fighter, AT -AT, ATSD support. So, um, for the technicality sake, I suppose it's best to, just to lock down uh, this spawn here. So when you finally at this position, um, you have you have them in the base uh, on spawn. Basically, you want to rotate from this position here. This is one of the best positions on the map, a because you can see their whole street. You can get shots on anyone moving into the cave. You can see if you jetpack up and use these. Um, Use these hills, they're kind of harder to do. Like, actually, this is a great position here. You can see they're spawned here, here, and then when you kill a lot of them there and your ATATs push up, um, often you'll get people spawning here. You need a lot of awareness to um, pull this off. But when 
when you know there are guys spawning behind, you can just you can just move. You can just push up. Obviously, not jetpack straight in. That would be silly. But um, you can intelligently move to their spawn and lock them down because a your teammates will be teammates will be around here and you will be able to pin them from the uh, position that you're at uh, watching their spawns. So that's essentially um, my interpretation of the second uplink. Um, the third uplink is again fairly easy to rotate the spawns, stop them from getting uplinked. Um, basically stop them getting uplinks obviously you need to kill them first. Um, the uh, truth for any objective game mode in any game, first person shooter or third person. Um, I definitely recommend um, getting height control. Like height control is definitely the most important part of uh, uh, So when you're um, when you're up at the uh, mud huts or whatever you want to call them, the moisture farm. Um, there's three main spawns, and both are marked by each mud hut. So we have first spawn at the back here, it's really easy to lock down that spawn here because you've got the upper ground, you have the high ground, you've got the hills, um, second spawn being the middle, the middle mud hut, and then you have the back one, and I think you can get a few spawns uh, underneath the map, I'm not sure, maybe they go through the hut down below, but um, what you want to do is you need to get height control because that's where they spawn, and if you're spawn killing them, they're dead. If they're dead, it means your teammates can go for the uplink uncontested. It's an easy win. So, when you're, when you're alternating spawns, um, basically you, you want to be employing the jetpack, the personal shield, and the back to bomb, like, all the time. And using them, like, intelligently and in conjunction with each other. So if you've, so if you've popped a bubble shield and people are shooting you, once it pops, you jetpack out. And... Basically, you try and prolong your death as long as possible, uh, rotating between those three abilities. They're really great for staying alive. So, as for the final uh, uplink, um, stay up top, um, rotate those three spawns, the all three hut spawns, and so long as you keep them in that position, um, they will have no chance of getting under and uh, activating the uplinks. So um, if anybody has any questions or anything, um, let me know in the chat box. If you guys uh, enjoyed this uh, tutorial or map breakdown, let me know in the comments. Um, if you have, yeah, basically, if you have any more questions, let me know. I'll try and answer them as best I can. Um, if there's anything you feel is kind of iffy, you don't think my strategies uh, good. Just yeah, let me know. I, w I want some critique uh, because that's that's how we all improve. That's how we all get better. So so I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, I will see you guys on the next one because there will be a next one. Um, I'll probably be doing uh, Endor. Endor is one of my next favorite maps. So when I um, figure out uh, what I have to say, I'll probably send out another video based on what you guys enjoyed or didn't enjoy for this. Anyway, laters.